So that's a full service broker, the full shebang. You know, like a Hollywood, front, back and in your crack? <laughs> Hi, my name is Vashi and I'm in my late 20s and I like to talk about finances, well-being and being single. This is part three in my 10 part investing series. If you haven't already seen part one and two, where I talk about the things you should do before you start investing and what the stock market actually is, please check those out before you get into this one. Like I've said before, I'm doing this for everyone. Financial independence is so important and I think it's something that everyone can achieve. I got you, my sister. These videos probably won't do as well as some of the other content on my channel. However, I feel really, really deeply about this stuff. And here I am at your service. So if you find any of my content in this series useful, please show some love down below and share it with whoever you think might find it useful. Cause I am a new creator and I am trying to grow. So any of your support is much appreciated. Thank you. So, Grab yourself a pen and paper, I'll wait. And let's get into it. Again, I have a background in financial services, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your due diligence before you start investing or acting upon any of the information in this series. This is edutainment. In this video, I'm going to talk about buying and selling stocks. In order to do this, you need a stockbroker. And this is a person or an entity that helps you buy and sell stocks. Cause you know, you can't just call up someone like Nike and ask to buy some stocks. It doesn't really work like that. Hey Nike, what's up? Yeah, I, I was wondering if I could buy some stocks. What do you mean? Oh, come on man, just do it. Please, for me, just do it. Hello? <laughs> So stock brokers provide varying levels of service all the way from a full service to something like robo investing. A full service stock broker is someone who you might typically associate when you hear the word investing. So you know, a suited and booted professional who works in a swanky office. These stock brokers will take the time to get to know you, understand your financial situation, ask things about your income, your debts, your lifestyle, your age, and also your risk appetite. They will take a look at all of these factors and help you draw out a long-term financial plan. They can also help you out with other things such as other types of financial advice, help with planning your retirement, and also things like tax. A full service stockbroker can help you manage your financial needs and goals, both in the short term and long term. And they're a really good option for someone who wants a comprehensive management of their finances. But of course, these things don't come free, you know? And often these services will come with varying levels of fees, but in most cases, the value of these services can outweigh the cost that you're paying. So that's a full service broker, the full shebang. You know, like a Hollywood, front, back and in your crack. <laughs> But I'd say in general, most stockbrokers offer three tiers of service. So the first one is an execution only service. Under this service, you manage your own investments without any input or advice from a financial advisor. The stockbroker acts kind of like a middleman in the situation to help you facilitate those sales. And they will also provide you with things like statements and contact notes and a route to putting through that order. So, you know, over the phone or online. Most investing apps that you hear about these days, these are all an execution only service. So the second tier of service is an advisory service. And not all stockbrokers will offer this service because it requires specialist knowledge and highly skilled stuff. And for this reason, an advisory service can cost quite a bit more than an execution only service. So what they'll do is ask you to fill in a questionnaire with things like your income, your debts, your lifestyle and your financial goals and also your risk appetite. Based on this information, they will provide you with advice to direct you towards investments that most suit your needs. An advisory service is a lot more personal than an execution only service and quite often you'll be given a point of contact within that firm which gives you direct access to an advisor. Also for this level of service you'll typically require a minimum level of investment for you to be able to access it in the first place. 
And then the third tier of service is a discretionary service where basically you're handing over your portfolio to a stockbroker and they manage everything for you. This is usually managed by the wealth division of these stockbroking companies. And again, you'll need a minimum amount to be able to access this service. And as the word wealth suggests, it's probably quite a lot than your advisory service or an execution only service. Some firms or some stockbroking companies may also offer a robo advisory service or robo investing service. And this is where they'll have pre-packaged investment portfolios that they'll direct you towards based on the information that you give them. So again, they'll ask you to fill in a questionnaire with all of your details and then offer you a choice of predetermined portfolios for you to invest your money in. So as you can tell, this is much less of a bespoke service compared to the other options that I've just been through. However, in some cases, if they see that you have a lot of funds you are investing, they will invite you to meet someone face to face. And a lot of these stockbrokers provide a dummy account where you're basically using fake funds to familiarize yourself with the service, how it works and see if it suits your needs. So if you are considering this option, please try out the demo account first and see if it actually works for you. So with all the things I've just said in mind, choosing the right stockbroker for you can depend on various different factors. So how much you actually have to invest, how much you're willing to pay on fees, the level of service you require, and also the method that you're most comfortable investing in. And remember, more expensive doesn't always guarantee a better outcome. And like I've said in previous videos, investing always comes with a risk. And also, there are so many investing scams out there at the moment, so please do your research first. If you're in the UK, it's probably a good idea to go on the Financial Conduct Authority's website, the FCA, to check whether that stockbroking firm is registered with the FCA. This requires them to follow investing regulations and also means that they have a duty to protect your money. If you're in the USA, I believe this is the SEC, so the Securities and Exchange Commission. There's also no harm in reading reviews online. Okay, so I hope you find that useful. The next video will be about what owning a stock actually means and we'll do a comparison of stocks versus funds. If you're here early, firstly, thank you. You'll have to wait a couple of days for that video to come out. However, if you're here a little bit later, please click on to the next video and I'll see you there. Okay, bye.